Hey, Juliet, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, how are you today? I am good. I am good. Thank you for asking. And thank you once again for participating in this uh, interview program that we're having for the Morehouse College students. So to open it up, just tell, just can you uh, please just tell us your name and a little bit about your background, where you're from? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Juliet Van Johi, and I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. And I'm a security engineer here at GitLab in the security automation team. And um, I recently graduated with a master's um, last year from Queen's University in Belfast, UK. And um, in my spare time, I enjoy hanging out with my three lovely dogs. And I've just also recently picked up Polaroid photography as a hobby. Yeah. Nice, nice. So can you take, take, take us back here to when you first sort of heard about software development and what your initial mm -hmm. thoughts were. Do you remember how old you are when you first started thinking about the industry? Um, so I think I'd even go a bit back further where like just from a really young age, I was really interested in computers. Um, my dad had bought uh, one of these old desktop, like old generation desktop machines called a compact Windows 95. And so we used to use it at home and just outside of like using it like for, you know, playing games like Minesweeper and Dangerous Dave and using paint. I would always like just find myself um, tinkering around the MS-DOS terminal prompts and wondering like, what's this black screen? And it has some really cool text where I don't really understand what's happening. So I just try to type stuff. And obviously at the time it was just like all gibberish, but um, I just didn't have a clue at that time what a terminal was and what terminal commands were. And um, so later on I joined a high school and I just decided to take computer studies like as an elective, just cause I was still interested. And uh, my teacher for this subject was actually, I think to me, my first mentor and role model as a woman in tech. And so, um, yeah, she really encouraged us because it was an all girls boarding school. Uh, so we were all girls just studying tech and she really like inspired us to work harder. And so later on, then I, I went to University of Nairobi to study my bachelor's in computer science. And that's where I got to now really learn the basics of coding and just how software is built. Yeah. Nice, nice. So college is when you first got into software. Well, high school, it sounds like, is when you first got into sort of the idea of software development. And then you made the decision when you got to college that this is what you were going to specialize in? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. okay. So when you were in college, um, mm -hmm. what was it like going through that program of, of doing software development there? What was it like? So um, I think like it was all a bit still new. Um, because we hadn't really done programming less, like lessons before in high school or we didn't have like what there is right now where you can get boot camps for kids and all that. So it was all really uh, fresh. And I think it was exciting for me because I was getting to uh, delve a bit deeper into like software development. And also at the same time, um, we were just, you know, a couple of uh, young, people just interested in building stuff. So I think it was a really good um, atmosphere to be able to learn new things. And yeah, um, like I think like also just as part of uh, the degree, got to do like internships on the side. And so this just helped to build like the foundation. Nice, nice. So tell me what internships did you participate in? Did any of them have to do with software development? Um, yeah, so um, my first internship was um, in a health care software company. So what we were doing was just building medical record systems. So I got to learn uh, languages like Python and JavaScript and um, get to learn what testing was and, you know, just uh, the whole software development cycle. And um, I think like I got to learn so much just outside of what I was being taught in school. And not to say that what you learn in school isn't useful. It's just, I think that school offers you the good basic fundamentals and then getting to like that work experience helps you to add onto the knowledge that you have because you're able to see how people approach problems like uh, to solve like different uh, business use cases. 
Nice, nice. So did you intern with GitLab? Um, yeah, so that was a bit later on when I decided to come do my master's uh, in the UK. Ah. So um, as part of um, that program, we were supposed to like look for um, security internships. And luckily at that time, um, GitLab was looking for um, an intern to join in, in the engineering uh, pilot program. So I think that was just a lucky chance for me. And <laughs> I was so, yeah, really happy to join and just worked through uh, May to August last year. And um, yeah, I think that internship was an amazing experience. Sure. Okay. So I jumped a, a bit ahead there. So all apologies. So what then was your first job out of college before you decided so, to get master's? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my first job out of college was um, at a small startup where I was an Android and Ruby on Rails engineer. Um, so um, at this point, we were building our financial services and you know digitizing them. And I was the only Android engineer in addition to our CTO. And for me, my skills, I just got in just from a, a regular school project. So um, there was a lot to learn on the job, definitely. And just getting to know what are like the latest technologies and tools that you can use to build uh, mobile apps that satisfy customers. And so um, this really kept me on my toes and helped me to grow my skills exponentially. And yeah, um, I think also just part of this was um, having a good mentor uh, helped me at this stage of my career uh, because I had like someone to always reach out to and ask questions. Right, right. So then what propelled you then after getting the undergraduate degree in computer science, then working in the field, what propelled you to want to go get a master's? So, um, I had always loved coding and um, I realized that the more software you build, um, you may come up with like a great product or an application, but if it's not secure, um, users will tend to shy away from using it. So I was thinking that it would be great to merge sec like software engineering with security. So I looked for programs that did this and that's why I decided to just pursue that master's in cybersecurity because it gave me a good foundation on both um, fields and just not knowing only how to code but also just how to protect that code and how to protect like protect systems overall. Yeah, nice. so nice. yeah. Thank you for protecting us. I greatly appreciate <laughs> it. Now, um, so then you go and you're getting this master's in cybersecurity and you do this internship with GitLab. How did you end up getting an internship with GitLab? Um, so actually um, a recruiter reached out to me um, from GitLab on LinkedIn. And so it was just, I found it to be quite an easy application process because there was just an coding skills assessment and an interviews with a panel and after that um, I was able to join in and what I also loved about it was that it was so easy to integrate from the first day just because it was remote and so everything was already set up just by the first day of me uh, signing in to my new um, yeah laptop and everything so yeah. right. and what did you do during your internship so um, I was working in the security department as a security intern and so mm -hmm. This involved rotating across the different security teams. This included like application security, the red team, uh, security incidents and response teams and other number of teams. And what I was doing was just getting to understand the functions that they undertook and um, how they all worked together cohesively to ensure their overall like security posture of GitLab. And um, also I got a chance to like work on a number of projects um, through the whole period as well. Yeah. Okay, nice. And then you transitioned then from being an intern and once you graduated, you joined GitLab full-time? 
Yes, um, so um, I was happy to be able to get uh, a chance to join full time as a security engineer in one of the teams that had rotated in. And so that was from October last year. And yeah, I'm still in that role right now. Nice, congratulations. Yeah. So, so tell Thank me you. about your current role and how does it relate to how consumers see or use our product? Okay, um, so my current role involves like designing, building and just deploying security tooling and automation. Uh, so this helps to automate efforts and improve the security of GitLab as a company and GitLab the product too. And I think a good example of this is like with the current project that we're working on. Um, we are trying to identify instances of spam within GitLab issues. And so in this way, we are providing a mechanism for our customers to be able to deal with spam problems. So um, yeah, that's just one way of how we get to interact uh, with customers, yeah. Nice, so do you take in customer feedback at all? Like how does, how do you know what improvements to make and when to make them? How, how does that factor in? So right now, first of all, we like, build the prototypes and um, at the end, once it's in production, what we do is we work with other teams to make sure that we're getting back the feedback. And just in general, we also have testing just to make sure everything is running as it should. And yeah, so I think it's more of a collaboration process across different teams just to get that user feedback. Okay, okay, nice, nice. And so obviously you, you have this undergraduate degree, you have a master's degree, you interned here at, at GitLab. Obviously you have a, a skill set that was desirable to GitLab. What do you think were the three sort of, or two or three sort of main things that you had that made a recruiter come out and reach out to you and say, Juliet, we want you to talk to GitLab? Um, yeah, so um, I think, the first thing I'd say is like having just that little background in security through like schooling and previous like internships uh, gave me sort of a higher standing while applying. And um, also like, I think having team player and collaboration skills that I had built in now the previous um, experiences I had was also important, like important because um, GitLab places collaboration as a value as a highly within its credit values. So yeah, I think that was another like really important skill. And just in general, um, being able to um, work, work like with different types of teams um, across my projects that was a bit evident. And so this also gives you an upper hand and that's something I'd also um, recommend for other students to try and um, on their resume is just show what you're working on and who you're working with and yeah that gives you a leg up. Nice so now that you've you've interned at GitLab you've been here since this past October full-time what are some of the yeah. skills that you've developed or are currently developing that you think will make you better in your career? Mm -hmm. um, so I think like I've started improving on my presentation skills. Um, this is still a, like a huge work in progress, but um, I've gotten the chance to like uh, demo projects with other teammates and um, show this, showcase this to people. And what I really like about GitLab is that people are willing to listen and um, people are like willing to give feedback. So it's always easy just to say, okay, I'd like to show you guys this. So can we work on this together? And can I get your feedback on this? Um, I think another thing that I've really learned um, to do is manage my time more effectively. Um, and this is because of the nature of work here. Um, GitLab offers so much flexibility. And so you're able to choose like your own work hours and uh, see when you're most productive as well as when you'd need to take a break and get to interact maybe with other team members through coffee chats. And so, um, yeah, I think those are the two main skills I'm still working on, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So think back to your 20 year old self, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. what are some, what is some of the advice that you would give your 20 year old self that you now know that you wish you had back then? 
Um, like, okay, um, so I think in Kiswahili, which is like my native language, we have this saying called uh, Penyania Panangia. So this is just similar in meaning to like where there's a will, there's a way. So as long as you're willing like to put the time and dedication into um, developing your skills, your uh, opportunities will always come knocking. So at the 20 year old mark, uh, a lot of people are at the point where your career is just starting off and you're wondering like, where will I land in this job market? So at that time I would have encouraged myself to just go even further by being more proactive in acquainting like myself with areas that I'm interested in. And just, yeah, growing my network by surrounding myself with people who are experts in these areas. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. now that you've been in this industry, specifically now mm -hmm. cybersecurity, how do you see the industry transforming in the next few years? And what do you think young people should do to prepare for it? Um, I think like with COVID, um, the job market has really changed. And so uh, more companies are becoming remote fast. And my advice would be like, just to look for ways, again, to just grow your skills and market yourself, um, especially now that there are so many, there are gonna be so many new jobs um, related to tech, uh, since there's now this new digital dimension. And um, yeah, you'd want to be desirable to these companies and um, also just try and contribute to open source projects um, so to give you that edge as well, yeah. Nice, nice. So any uh, other than that, any other words you want to give the students who are currently watching this? Um, I guess I'd just say like, uh, keep staying motivated and just pushing for your goals. Um, we like, you just need to believe in yourself and you definitely get there if you put in the hard work. Yeah. All right. Well, Julia, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.